And hello everybody out there in Radioland. My name's Dave Pavlina and this is Japanatron. Japanatron is a show about life in Japan and Japanese culture. So let's get right to it. Uh, summer is upon us. Let's talk about summer. Specifically, something I don't really like that much about summer actually in Japan. It's the bugs. Now, summer in general has a lot of good things. You got the matsuri, you know, the festivals. You got the obon dance. You know, you got the beer. You got mugicha. You got the uh, watermelons. Lots of good things are in summer. In general, it's a pretty good time. But, you know, as you know, uh, Japan is a humid country. Uh, So not only is it hot, but it's also very wet. So... During the summer, you're always wet, and this is just something you have to live with and just get used to it. You will always be wet. You just be constantly wet like you just got out of the shower. And really what I want um, in my ideal world is just clothes made out of towels. That would be awesome. I have a towel ket, which is a uh, blanket made of towel material, uh, which is what I sleep with, which is an awesome product. Um, but yeah, I just want clothes made of towels. You know, better yet, I just should be naked all the time, because then there's nothing sticking to me. Because, God, it's it's always, you're always sticky. Your clothes are just sticking to you. You know, you need to constantly be wiping off all the sweat. So, yeah, that's kind of a bummer. But the point being is Japan is a humid country, uh, and bugs fucking love it here. I don't know what it is, but bugs love humidity. It's kind of like, I guess it's kind of like old people. Yeah, bugs are like old people. You know, they all move to Florida uh, for the humidity or something, the heat and the humidity. So bugs bugs are like old people. They just, you know, they just all, like, swarm to uh, the humid places, the hot, humid places. So there's, there's three in particular, three bugs in particular um, in Japan that drive me fucking crazy. So let's talk about these. And maybe you share in my pain. Number one, and definitely the the biggest one, the biggest group, the major group, is the mosquitoes. And these, the mosquitoes in Japan are not the fat, slow mosquitoes I knew and loved in LA. Um, they're uh, what's called uh, Asian tigers. They're evil little fuckers. They're tiny. They're just needles with wings. And they have these, like, silver and black stripes on them, if you look really close, uh, which is where the name Asian Tiger comes from. They're evil little fuckers. They're like ninjas. They can fit through the screens, so all bets are off. They'll get in your house. I don't care what kind of defense you have. They will, how, how small that screen is, they will fucking get in. They will figure out a way. They, they're like the Marines, dude. They're the Navy SEALs. They will fucking get in, in there. They will penetrate. They will penetrate you. All bets are off. They got no morals. They don't give a shit about anything or anybody. Nothing is off limits. They will bite your nose, your ears, your fucking eyeballs. Um, they'll sneak into your pants and they'll bite your balls. They'll just bite your testicles. They don't give a shit. And uh, if you're a woman, they'll bite your ovaries. They don't. They don't give a shit. And um, you know they they won't just bite your balls and suck the blood. They'll take the jizz out. They'll they'll um, they'll get the sperm and then they'll bite a woman in the ovaries and they'll take her eggs and then they'll take that shit back to their nest and they'll make like a test tube baby and they'll have like a baby farm going on where they'll just grow babies just so they can bite the shit out of them too. That's how fucking evil these things are, okay? No morals at all. They're like, they're they're definitely, um, no question about it, they are the emperors of the mosquito world. They bite other mosquitoes. They have like mosquito servants and slaves, and they just bite them just to fuck around. And they brag, you know, to all like the lesser mosquitoes, like, dude, I bit that guy's balls. Yeah, look at that shit. And the other mosquitoes go like, man, that guy's badass. You know, they all look up to them because these Asian tigers, they don't fucking care about anything. So that being established, this is what you got to deal with in Japan. 
these Asian tiger mosquitoes. Okay, so here's here's a few tips. Just don't go outside. Fuck, it just isn't fucking worth it. Close up your windows, lock your doors, um, double lock them, because uh, they'll figure they'll get that shit open, you know. And uh, just use the air conditioner. Don't bother with windows. Um, if you do go outside, uh, wear a burqa. That's what I do. Um, you know, like the Middle Eastern women do. Just cover all that shit up. Um, the other good idea, uh, which unfortunately I live like on the second floor, is uh, I have, you know, uh, people I know live up on the 50th floor. And the mosquitoes, they're like, ah, fuck it. I'm not going to fly up that high. You know, so just live as high as you possibly can. You know, the 50th, 60th, 100th floor or whatever. And hopefully they won't come up to you. Um, another thing I really have found effective is to keep all the vent fans in my house turned on. You know, like the, um, the little fan in the, uh, the toilet room and the shower. Uh, I just keep those fans on. Not the really loud shower fan, because that just gets annoying, but like the, you know, the little tiny kind of ceiling fans uh, that vent the air outside. I find that helps keep them out, because I think they, I think they come in that way, uh, through those vents, and if you leave the fan on, they can't fly against the wind, I guess. So that's, that kind of helps a lot. Um, I've researched this extensively, um, and the thing that attracts mosquitoes the most is the CO2 in your breath. So uh, I've, I've tried just about every product to um, stop these fuckers from coming in. And um, the ones that are most effective are some, somehow dealing with masking the CO2 of your breath, your smell. Okay, that smell of the CO2 in your breath, that's what drives them there. Anything with lights, like a light show or um, anything like that, it just isn't going to work. Anything with sonic, anything, you know, like it's got some kind of supersonic sounds that are keeping them away, that's total bullshit. That's not going to work at all. Okay, so in general, um, Japan sells a lot of products uh, related to uh, keeping the mosquitoes out. And the ones that work the best, I found, uh, let me tell you. Um, first of all, they'll put a day marking, like how long it lasts. And anything over 60 days is bullshit. There's ones that say 90 or 120 days. That's total fucking bullshit. Don't believe it. Don't bother with those. Those things are useless. Get the one with like the lower number, like 30 or 60 days, because at least the the maker is being realistic about it. Okay. Um, non anything not electric, you know, that hangs or some kind of um, they're always like some kind of air freshener type of thing you know it hangs somewhere maybe outside uh they all resemble air fresheners that's the bulk of the uh, japanese products i found um the ones that hang it's like a sheet of plastic with um some kind of repellent thing in it they work relatively well for a maybe about a month and then they'll start wearing down regardless of how long they say it's gonna last um so don't believe it uh, I, what I do is I just keep buying more and more of them. So I just keep adding to them. So by the end of the summer, I have like 10 or 20 of those things hanging out. And it looks like I'm some kind of voodoo guy because it's like, stay away, mosquitoes, please don't come in here. So, um, yeah, that's 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 those things. That's the bulk of the products. Um, the one I find that works the best for me is the electric little burners that are electric and you screw in these bottles of um of the liquid and there's like this wick that very slowly heats up and it just constantly releases the um fumes you know the scent of this stuff that kills and or masks you know the scent the repellent those work the best because they're consistently releasing the juice into the air um and you got to check the bottle to make sure you're not running out. You know when it's empty because you can clearly see the bottle. I just stock up like crazy on these bottles. Every summer I spend at least 100, maybe 200 bucks on this stuff. And I just put I buy I have literally 3 of these things and I put one right near all the windows. And if and when I open the windows, I just turn them on, make that my daily life thing. And um yeah, that's my deal. 
Um, those work by far the best. One thing I really love and miss about the USA is their excessive approach to certain problems like these, like mosquitoes. And I wish Japan would do this. And man, if I had the means and or money to do this, I would totally do it. And I'm actually, I'm actually investigating this. Uh, it just seems like a big pain. The USA sells this ridiculous product, which is fucking awesome. It's these things, it's probably the size of, God, like a vending machine, almost. Um, maybe not that big, like a drink dispenser. You know, like a water dispenser, you'd see. And they have a giant, like, CO2 tank, or a methane tank, I think. A propane tank, I'm sorry. And basically the idea is it slowly releases, you stick this thing outside somewhere, and it slowly releases CO2. And it tricks the mosquitoes into thinking that the machine is like a person standing there breathing. You know, so it, it releases this kind of CO2 smell, you know. And the mosquitoes flock to it because that's what they that's what they're uh, that's what they're targeting. They're looking for that. And when they come to the machine, they'll get sucked into this kind of vacuum thing and they'll dry out in this bag. And then you kind of empty the bag out, and you'll just find a whole stock, a whole flock of just uh, dead mosquitoes in there. And the idea is that Japan's approach is to just repel them, keep them away from you. The USA's approach, which, goddamn, bless them, bless the USA for this, is uh, they'll attract every mosquito for like a 10-mile radius to this machine and just fuck it up, chop it up into bits. So, uh, the, hopefully the mosquito population in your general vicinity will just go down because you're just murdering every mosquito around you. And, oh, I love that. And really, I've been looking into getting one shipped to me. I don't know how much that would cost. It just seems ridiculous. It, it just doesn't seem plausible. Um... The other concern I have is how I would refill the this giant American uh, you know, canister of propane or CO2. Um, not only do I not have a car, but I don't even know if like a Jap Japanese hardware store or, you know, the home centers here would even do that. Um, and I don't even know if I, if I could get like a Japanese canister of propane and connect it to the machine. Um, would they be compatible? I don't know. These are all questions I have to look into because, um, Really, whenever summer is upon me, I'm very attracted to this machine, and I, I'm really uh, tempted to make the move and purchase one of these things. Uh, so yeah, that's mosquitoes. You, you got to watch out for those fuckers. They're, they're, they'll kick your ass. They'll, they'll bite your balls. Uh, the next bug I want to talk about is called Dani. Uh, that's the Japanese word. I really don't know what the English word is. I'd say it's like mite, like a mite. Some kind of tiny, little, little tiny like almost microscopic bug. And I don't know the English word because I learned this word uh, after moving to Japan. Uh, there's something uh, I didn't even know existed. And Dani are little tiny mites that uh, live in uh, tatami mats, you know, the grass-made mats uh, in traditional Japanese rooms. And um, these are tiny... Oh, I hate these little fuckers. You know, I used to have a uh, tatami in my house, and I just get itchy, you know. And at first I thought, oh, maybe I have an allergy to the tatami. And that could have been part of it. Um, but then I heard about these dani things, and I pulled up the carpet, and you look real close. You just got to concentrate on a part of your tatami mat, and you'll see, like, it kind of moving, like a little white fleck of something, speck of something, like a du piece of dust. And they're moving. And that's them. You can see them with the naked eye if you really are paying attention closely. Um, otherwise, you got to sit there and kind of maybe get, like, a magnifying glass or something. Um, and, you know, they say that new tatami mats, you know, they're treated or whatever... You know, they steam them or something, or they treat them with chemicals. I don't know what the fuck they're doing, but I think it's bullshit. Because you're putting grass in your house, and bugs fucking love grass. 
Okay, so if you're going to have a floor made of grass, <laughs> you're going to get bugs in it. So the best approach, which really worked for me, which pretty much solved the problem a 100%, it did, is get rid of the tatami. And um, I was looking into replacing it with flooring. Now, the problem with that is it's expensive because when you remove the tatami mats, your floor is now lower than normal. And you have to hire, like, a carpenter, unless you know how to do this yourself. Uh, if you do, you're awesome. Um, to kind of build the floor back up and then put flooring over that. Uh, that would solve your problem. Uh, the problem also I had with that, it's not only expensive, is it kind of messes up the look of the room. Because the rest of the room has that kind of Japanese look. It has the Japanese ceiling, it has the Japanese wallpaper, and then now you have flooring in there. So the tatami does look good. It makes it a, a really consistent look in the room. So I was like asking myself, don't they make like imitation tatami? As bad as that sounds, it was really attractive to me because something made of like plastic, you know, that looks like tatami would not get the bugs. And sure enough, they do make this. Um, and my God, this is the most awesome product. Uh, it solves the problem. It looks like real tatami. Uh, no, it does not smell like real tatami. Uh, but it, it solved the problem, and it looks fine, and I'm very, I'm a very happy, uh, customer, um, it was, I think it was even cheaper than Real Tatami, so it looks fine, it looks great, uh, Japan did a really good job of this, and I can't recommend this enough, because it gets rid of the bugs, because man, that organic stuff, okay, it's good and all, you know, having real grass in your house, but it ain't worth it, because you're gonna get the bugs. If you're one of those people, oh, it's got to be real taught to me. You know, I have to have the real thing. Fine. I understand that. Um, you're really into it or whatever. Maybe you have the soba pillows too, which also get bugs eventually. Um, I gave up on those as much as I love the soba pillows. Um, anyways, my approach when I did have the real taught to me is just once in a blue moon, maybe every summer or so, just bug bomb the shit out of that room. I took, like, everything out, and then I just had, like, two bug bombs, you know, those fumigator things going on in there. After that was done, I got this kind of Donny spray that has a pin, and you poke the pin down into the uh, into the tatami. So it injects the, the uh, chemical right down in there, right where the bugs are. Uh, and I just use the whole can up, maybe two cans on the whole room, just fucking fumigating and chemical bombing the shit out of the room, you know. Um, <laughs> the problem with this is then you got to sleep in, well, maybe you don't sleep in there, but I sleep in the tatami room. Uh, it, tatami rooms just seem like they're they're meant for sleeping to me. They're, they're very conducive to sleep. Um, then you got to sleep in this just chemical, <laughs> this, this, this room just drenched in chemicals. And then also the idea of a bunch of dead mites all throughout the uh, the uh, the flooring just kind of uh, drove me crazy. So yeah, I just I recommend it. Spend the money, get some fake tatami, some imitation tatami, and your problem is solved. Um, so yeah, problem solved. I wish I could solve the uh, problem of mosquitoes like I did with the with the Dani. Uh, the last bug I want to talk about which is a bug that always irks Japanese people, is the cockroaches. Um, cockroaches love not only humid, uh, but they love filth, anything nasty. And they love uh, the summer. I, I don't know, they're always seeming, uh, they come out in the summer. They're just dormant in the winter because of the cold or something. And the word for cockroach in Japanese is funny to me. It's gokibudi, which... <laughs> Which sounds like a cute word to me. Like, ah, oh, goki booty, goki booty. But if you say that to a Japanese person, they just, bleh, they get freaked out because their image of, you know, is of cockroaches. But it just seems like a very inappropriate word. Uh, whereas the English word cockroach, it just, it just hits you. It has that impact. Uh, and uh, Japanese, the language, the culture, everything it focuses on cute. And it's just funny that, uh, cockroach is no exception. Go keep booty. So, um, yeah, I always thought that was kind of funny. I, I think the English word is just better for that. The tip I can give you, um, 
and I've I haven't solved my the cockroach problem one hundred percent, but I've I've almost eliminated it, eliminated it. I've gone through seasons now with maybe at most one what I call incidents, you know, where you have to go head to head with taking down a goki booty uh, a cockroach, and the the problem with the Japanese ones they will fly, they can fucking fly. Uh, so you got to watch out for that. They're not fat, like, slow-moving roach things. They're fast motherfuckers, and they will fly. And they'll sneak through your door, you know, the crack in your door. They'll get through there. Uh, they don't give a shit. So um, the tip here is get rid of trash immediately. If you cook, I just don't cook. Just fuck it. Don't even cook food anymore. Eat out. It's not. It's not worth it. But if you have any kind of fresh trash, you know, with food trash, get rid of that shit immediately. Any kind of filth, any kind of smelling thing, they will they will flock to that. So get rid of that immediately. You have to be you have to adopt an OCD approach. You have to be extremely anal about cleanliness, especially in summer, in order to prevent the cockroaches from coming to your house. It's like Passover. You know, if you uh, if you put the uh, the blood of the lamb on your door, you know, the the cockroaches will pass and they'll go to the next sucker that has trash in their house or whatever. Um, meaning, if you keep your house very clean, they will skip you. Okay, because they'll, they'll instead go to your neighbor's house, which is all, you know, filth-ridden or whatever. So, um, get rid of the trash. Keep your drains clean. Okay, I've noticed, actually, I swear, they come up through the drain. You know, they're in the sewer or something. If you keep the hair and that nasty, gunky shit out of your drain consistently, keep it really clean, they will not come. Um, I, I get a, an old cheap, you know, like a cheap uh, spray bottle from like the 100 yen shop, fill it with bleach, you know, kitchen bleach. It's a lot cheaper than that, you know, cobby killer or whatever they sell, which is basically just foaming bleach. It's total bullshit, and they charge you ten times as much. Get the, ch- the, the, the kitchen bleach, you know, pour it into a, a hundred yen, you know, spray bottle, and just spray your, um, your drains once in a while with that. That'll keep those fuckers away. Um, get rid of all the food. Um, any food left out, fuck it. Put it in the fridge, freeze it, whatever. Just don't, don't keep food anymore. Like I said, just eat out all the time. If you do have food, keep it keep it locked up in some kind of like airtight container. Uh, they will smell it and they will be attracted to it. They will flock to it. Um, spray. I love this shit. Spray the shit out of everywhere. I spray uh, my veranda, you know, the balcony area. I'll spray uh, all over. Uh, like there's a flower bed near my veranda, which has got to be a bug festival in there. So I spray the shit out of that. I just pesticide the crap out of it. You know, I'm like a uh, farm worker, you know, just in the, uh, I'm in the, in the crop dusting. You know, I'm flying airplanes over the garden, just crop dusting the shit so that these bugs, mosquitoes, and, and uh, cockroaches won't come in. Um, my favorite spray, and they probably have this in the U.S. as well, um, is... It's not pesticide, it's just a spray that sprays out extremely cold fluid. I don't know what it is, liquid nitrogen? Who knows? I don't know what the science is behind it. But it's easy to find because the can will have like frozen, you know, ice, uh, icicle uh, cockroaches and bugs all over it. And it'll say something like minus 1,000 degrees Celsius or something ridiculous on it. Um... (laughs) <laughs> I swear, if that was if that was true, would like couldn't you like freeze your hand or your face? I don't know. It seems something dangerous to have something that sprays like you know minus a thousand Kelvin. <laughs> um. Anyways, it's relatively easy to find. I love it because it's clean. It's uh. It, there's no pesticides. So when you go head to head with these things in your house, and you have to um. You have to battle one that's it's you know uh, running real fast through your house. Then uh, I don't have any concerns about you know the pesticide all over the inside of the house. So because these this thing just sprays this kind of cold neutral spray and it just freezes the thing and kills it that way. Uh, it does a really good job and it's kind of fun because you have to battle it for a little bit. You have to you have to get the spray on it. It's not like a chemical that will kill it uh, on on 
touching the, uh, on coming in contact with the cockroach, you have to kind of get it real good, and then you'll slow it down. And then once you slow it down a little bit, you got it. And you'll just just hammer the shit out of the thing with that spray. And it's like, ugh, and just kind of stops moving and freezes in its tracks. It's awesome. Um, get two of them, one for each hand, and just double barrel that shit. Um, and the other thing is, if you see cockroaches around, you know, the outside of your apartment, once I was walking um, outside, ironically taking out the trash, and I saw, like, a cockroach hanging out, like, on the wall uh, near the elevator of my apartment building. And I'm like, oh, fuck this motherfucker. He's going to get it. So I went out there um, with, I double-barreled it. In one hand, I had the frozen spray thing, and the other hand, I had the, the traditional chemical one. And I just took that fucker down. Um, and it's weird. The body of the cockroach will disappear. I don't know if that's because there's some Japanese guy who cleans up the maintenance. the does maintenance on the uh, apartment building. He just cleans it up. That might be, but I swear, I think birds eat these things. Uh, they must love, I don't know, maybe birds like live prey. I don't know. I gotta, I gotta learn. I'm stupid. I gotta study you know, Wikipedia, that shit. Um, anyways, the, the body of the cockroach always disappears, like, almost instantly. And I wish I knew what was going on there. Um, anyways, I do digress. Um, that's, uh, the cockroaches. Um, the point here... Uh, like I said, is you got to be an OCD freak, uh, like me. Um, because if you are, and you keep your house just immaculately clean, uh, you won't have the problem um, with the cockroaches. I wish I could say the same thing about the mosquitoes. Um, so, all right. I hope that helps you, fellow possible expat, or person interested in Japan, or other. I don't know. All right, take care, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, talk to you later. Welcome to the Penetron. The Penetron, the Penetron, the Penetron, the Penetron. You have received this transmission from the Comedy Podcast Network. For more shows, visit ComedyPodcastNetwork.com.